Hello, I'm Dinus the Mirror. So this is the view from the top floor of Hotel Africa here in Monrovia, Liberia. It's a stunning view. And again, the potential of Liberia is just, again, I know we focus on Ghana and everywhere else, but I really think the black diaspora should come back and not and, and, and focus on Liberia. Because again, who established Liberia? It was the black diaspora, it was black Americans. So I don't, I don't understand why we're neglecting Liberia. Look at this. Look at this view. Look at this view. Top floor of Hotel Africa, which was a five-star hotel, 500 rooms before uh, the Civil War completely uh, wrecked it. Look at that view. scapegoat the Liberia scapegoat so I was gonna bring that up right so Liberia is a scapegoat for everything now the actual geopolitics which is behind Liberia diamond cartels the Beers cartel uh, France who for one year supporting Charles Taylor all these things but what you get is this very simplified story of of the black people out of the US getting along with the indigenous black people and then that's just the thing so that becomes a scapegoat of, oh, well, if the black people come from the diaspora, then they're going to act like they're better than us and blah, 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 blah. So I actually gave a talk at that AAPC conference dealing with Haiti, Morocco, and the AU. Because um, Haiti applied to join the AU and were rejected, even though they are the reason why you can walk the streets in Africa now and not have to worry about getting kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Because when they whooped that British behind, that's what they said they have to stop the quote-unquote trade of bringing people here. When Jamaica whipped that British behind, that's where they said they have to stop chattel enslavement altogether. So both of those are reactions to Britain, the British getting their butts whooped. So essentially, if not for Haiti whooping that British behind, we'd still be dealing with kidnapping, 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 and all these things that are going on here. Now, just to bring it forward, when we're looking at the Liberia case study, and that's what I dealt with in the presentation was, after dealing with that, and then Morocco, where they're still enslaving black people, about over 200,000 black people. And they use the word abid, which means both slave and black interchangeably. So when they say slave, they mean black. When they say black, they mean slave. Boom, that's where they're coming from. And, um, but they applied to join the African Union, and they were accepted open arms, right? Because that's what all Africanism is about. Pan-Africanism means black people regardless of location. This whole all African people's conference means location regardless of whether you're African or you're invader or what. So Arab on top, white Arab on top, black indigenous person on the bottom is what that whole situation is about. So at the end, I had to deal with that Liberia question because I'm like, let's look, let's look at this thing. That Liberia is not separate from any other case of black on black violence, which according to uh, Dr. Amos Wilson, is black self-annihilation in service of white domination. So if you look at the war in Eastern Congo, that's about resources, that's about coal tan. So you have you know rebel groups that are funded by this side, you have Halliburton in there, you have all these multinational corporations. So you have black people who are fighting other black people, but you know we're dealing with that as though that's different from anywhere else, right. which is Liberia, it's about diamonds. So De Beers and all these diamond cartels are the ones who are behind financing all these things. So you see like a movie about Blood Diamond, but then don't put it in perspective that that's what's going on. You have in Rwanda, Hutus and Tutsis. So where are the diasporans there, right? All right. So in that instance, you know, again, that's at the border going into Congo. So all those same geopolitics going on there. But then you have, you know, so-called Tutsis thinking that they're better than Hutus. So where's the outcry? Oh, well, now we need to get rid of all Tutsis from the continent. No, that's not, what's, that's not the discussion. But now that's the discussion of why we can't deal with diasporans on the level of citizenship, so forth and so on. So it becomes a scapegoat. If you look at southeastern Nigeria, 
and all the unrest. Ebos, yeah. Right. Ebos, Efik, Ebibio, you name it. Whatever is going on there with shell oil, all these different lands that are polluted. Where the diaspora is there. Your scapegoat isn't there, but you still have black people killing black people in service of white people so they can take the resources away. If you look at the... Um, the unrest in the Maghreb, so northern Mali, you remember that whole crisis that's mm-hmm. there. Where the, the, the diaspora is there, they're nowhere to be found. Right. But what is to be found is uh, nuclear interests of France. So that's what powers France is right there in northwestern Niger. Right there across the border is magically what is really being fought over. But there are no diasporans there. So, so basically that the Liberia case isn't a separate case or different from any of these other cases. Of some, some cases you have black people fighting black people because one thinks that they're better than the other or this or that or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's all ensuring the survival of white folks for their white interests to take black resources and then laugh all the way to the bank when we're fighting each other over right. these things. If you look at uh, the so-called xenophobia in South Africa, right. where are the diasporans there? They're nowhere to be found. And I could go down the list. You can look at Central African Republic. Where are the diasporans there? They're nowhere to be found. I can go down a list of 50 mm-hmm. <laughs> of these types of conflicts, and there are no diasporans there, but somehow magically Liberia becomes no. the scapegoat. Nope. So we have to disenfranchise those who were enslaved because of look at what happened in Liberia. And if the diasporans come in their numbers, then we'll have another Liberia here and so forth and so on. But it doesn't even make logical sense when we have all these other cases that are the exact same about the resources in the ground and having pitting one black person against another black person so that they don't have to pay for those resources. So there are no tank factories, there are no bazooka factories, there are no AK-47 factories in the bush in Liberia. Where How's it all that getting in there? Again, funding by the diamond cartels. And there's a good documentary, I looked at this, actually around the time the stuff was going on, a little bit later, called um, The Diamond Life by Guerrilla News Network that really went into all the specific names of these cartels and their role in exacerbating conflicts where they already existed or creating conflicts where there were none previously. And you see it time and time again. So, you know, to, to basically get to mm-hmm. the heart of the whole Liberia question, it's just the exact same thing over and over again. But then it just becomes a way to disenfranchise those and not feel bad about it at the end of the day because now we have a narrative that allows us to be fundamentally unjust. So, should, is it fair? They were Africans. America didn't want the, the, the blacks to be so prevalent in their country. So they thought it wise, people got together and thought it wise to go out and scout for a place to resettle or repatriate these slaves, free slaves. Because the slaves taken from Liberia were taken to America. Say that one more time, because the argument too is that even though the slave trade was going on pretty much on the whole west coast of Africa, some people will say that the slavery wasn't taking place in Liberia. But you're saying that slave trade was active even in Liberia. Slave trade were more active in Liberia and Nigeria. Because oh, wow. these were places where slaves were taken in abundance, taken from in abundance. They were carried all there. But most of the Liberian slaves were settled in Southern America. Uh-huh. Precisely uh, California, uh, California uh, the, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, Virginia, those areas in uh, the Southern states. That's where they were settled. And after the abolition of slavery, these people were brought and settled back. Yeah, I was never colonized. The ACS that was founded in 1816 was put together for the purpose of repatriating and helping these free, free black slaves to settle. It was just an NGO. And okay. this NGO got support from the American government. That doesn't necessarily mean that America colonized Liberia. You see. So when they, they felt that they could stand on their own, they came out and made the, 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 the organizers of the ACS, those who were at the hierarchy of the ACS, to know that they had reached a stage to do business on their own. So they declared independence because of the encroachment on the territory of Liberia by other foreign powers. 
Because once you have your sovereignty, people will respect you, they will not trouble your, 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 your bother your territorial rights. Mm -hmm. So after all, lands were taken from the northern part of Liberia to Guinea, because Great Britain colonized Guinea. Great Britain colonized Sierra Leone. And lands were being stolen at that time by, by Great Britain, the eastern part and the northern part of Liberia. The western part and the northern part of Liberia. The eastern part was, was, was being encroached upon by the French, Africans. There was no way, even then, uh, if, if uh, the carrier reported to the League of Nations, then there were no redress. So they decided, since we cannot get no any redress from the world out there, we we'll declare independence to, 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 to hold our own sovereignty. To let the world know that we are a country on our own. Mm. So they declare. So then, so then again, the question is: So what was Liberia uh, prior to uh, independence? Because the question is sovereignty from who? That's the, that's what people keep asking: sovereignty for who? We say independence from whom? As I said before, you don't have to be under under the, the power of somebody before you can get independence. They were under nothing. They were under, they were being helped by those who established them, who helped to repatriate them to come to Liberia here. They were given remittances from the, the American Colonization Society. They came and established them here, and they, grew, they established them in Sierra Leone fights before they came back here through the instrumentality of Ralph e. Stockton and Eli Aries. They came here to look for a suitable place to bring the, the colonists. Because after the establishment of the ACS in 1860, the first president, Bush or Washington, there were guidelines put on the books for the protection of these people who were repatriated. But they came in 1820 on the ship February 6th from the port of New York. They learned that here in Sierra Leone on uh, the 9th of March in 1820. Mm -hmm. There were, there were uh, effort made for them to get a living place. But that effort was refuted by the then Governor of Sierra Leone, Kit Charles McCarthy. So Governor McCarthy refused them a piece of land. They finally came to Chevro in 1818 Samuel J. Mills and Ebenezer Borchers. They were sent to scout our land to repatriate these people. When they entered, they, they, they couldn't get any go ahead from the, the British government. They went to the on the island of uh, Chevro and, and they were helped by a former British, one of the first free British slaves, John Kissett. He managed to link them up with King Chevro and they were able to buy a parcel of land, Chevro Island. There they lived until problem broke out. They started getting sick and because of the unsanitary health condition at Chevro, mm -hmm. they were repatriated to Liberia. But before repatriation, Two of the agents at the time, Robert Fee Stockton and Eli Aries, came to look for land. And they met with six African kings. Uh -huh. And they were able to buy the mainland, the mainland where Morel stands now. Okay, so the, the land, mm -hmm. Providence Island, that's where they came in contact with the kings, yes or no? Yes, Providence Island, where they landed, but they only landed there and used that place as a resting place until they constructed them there. The buildings on the mainland. Okay. So the argument is that even though they negotiated and bought the land, mm -hmm. people will say that the ACS was heavily involved and therefore they somehow tricked the kings into giving the land to the new free black slaves. Is there any truth to that? Can you? They didn't give the land freely. The land was not given up freely. When these people left Chevro, because those came with the white man's mindset, and that they enslaved the indigenous people and they Im implemented a system of apartheid. Uh, what are your 
What are your thoughts when people say that? I, I look at it as a blatant fallacy. Uh -huh. Because if you came somewhere and you were accepted, mm -hmm. you would live peace, peaceably, right? Right. But there was a very hard time for the, for the settlers when they came. Okay, now were the indigenous tribes involved in any type of slave trade or were they um, beefing or warring with each other? Like when you say it was a hard time when they came, like what? Because slavery was still going on. Right. When they came here. Like uh, King Bromley, his son Kaikpa, was still carrying on slavery with the whites. Most, most, mostly Spanish at the time now because all of these superpowers got in the, in, into the slave business. See, the people didn't have a good stay here from their the origin. So they, they, they were not. Uh, they're plentiful. There were few. And then they just tried to dominate them by wishing a, a series of travel wars on them to exterminate other them. And they had to stand to defend themselves because they didn't come, they never came to take any land free. The land was bought. They didn't bother the natives. They protected themselves. Finally, as time passed, they started start to understand one another. But originally, for them to settle and rob the people, they didn't actually mean to give the land. But after everything was settled, the people came. When the was set, the people came, settled one another, and they started waging war on the people. All oh, these people here, they're not from here. They didn't come from here. How did they know that the particular land they were, they were taking from this same area here and brought back? How did they know they came from this area? But they had already received payment for the land. So the land was justifiably for the people. And you understand? For the people, they had no, 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 there was no act of slavery being repeated because the people knew how hard their forefathers work. And they all prayed for the abolition of slavery and they were free. Why should the native now in abundance come and start fighting them to, to, to exterminate all of them? They had to fight back. So you, 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 you are insecurity for your own life, you got to take time with it. You, can't, you couldn't give yourself up. There was a series of inter-travel wars, what not, because what, they saw that these people were more supreme than them. These people were people that were sold from this particular um, ge geographic origin. Yeah, They were sold. Black men all came from no part of the world because besides Africa. That's a clear indication and manifestation that these people came from Africa. They came from this particular era. So uh, be man, that this, that one, that. So he, he, he won't be more than us. That whether you more than them, you won't be more than them. They will lie to say because, just because you came from America. So that's the perception. Mm -hmm. well, so the, the, the coup in 1980, mm -hmm. what was the purpose, objective of, of the, the coup? coup? Yes. Well, uh, it was the same thing. Our, our Aborigines in the majority, and the, the American Liberian in the minority. So, oh, well, these people have been in leadership for long. Right. And we in the majority, our children are learning. More than some of them over there. So now is our time. So since they came, they have ruled this country for so many years. Now is our time. That was probably in the coup, simply. Okay. We're trying to take power. Okay. Um, and so you're saying that was the only objective. So uh, one of the objectives. One of them. What were the other objectives? I mean, basically, has Liberia been successful since the coup? Liberia never been successful since the coup. Since the coup, uh, the president, uh, the, 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 the military man who took over Senator mm -hmm. in 1980. Uh, he was developmental oriented, I must admit, but he was very wicked. He never took advice, and because he saw that he came in, as he said, he came in to redeem the indigenous people. Oh, that's, that was the redeeming that, yeah, that's he purpose. Said, yes. He said for rampant corruption, misuse of public office, and whatnot. That was he, he, he put the title men on poor. And killed which I, I, which was absolutely disgusting. All countries in the world, uh -huh. even in the United Nations, appealed to him to spare the lives of these people. He refused. Repeat that again, because people, people, all don't. the countries out there, appealed. Even in the United Nations, appealed to him. His compatriots in government, the hierarchy of government in Africa, appealed to him to spare the lives of these people. 
He refused and killed all. And he was wicked. He claimed that he came to power. He and 17 men came to power. And these 17 men were the men that ruled the government, the PRC, People Redemption Council. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they were very brutal. Until he, the, the President Do and his, his co host went, and look at here, he almost exterminated all. Mm -hmm. To show that they didn't come in the, good, in the best interest of the Liberian people. Because the people who brought you to power, you killed all. I think we'll let you whatever mean a lot. You kill all. Okay, so so the people that conspired with Doe to mm -hmm. act out the coup, yeah. he turned his back on them he as well. He turned his back on them. Oh, wow. He lied I, I didn't know that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. He yeah. said that he survived 36. Assassination attempts. Okay. <laughs> 36. And this time around, the first president of all, the time I was saying, he grabbed him, he killed him. Mm -hmm. They beat him. The news acts and come because Gun couldn't wake. So they took some of them, they, they took, stick, they beat some of them to death. Oh, they was in blank cool. So his government was very brutal. He start, he tried to calm down you know, and started doing good. Mm -hmm. But he promised the Liberian people in the world that he was only going to hold power for five years and then turn over to the civilian government. But after 1985, it became worse. He stayed in power, carried on election for that year, and he read the election and, and gave it and uh, uh, um, uh, push aside the man who won this, uh, uh, who was to have won this election, Jackson Abdo. Push it aside, he took power. Mm -hmm. He brought a split between Grand Chita County, where he hailed from, and Nima County. Mm -hmm. Because the majority of the people who happened to assault to power came from Nima. So he marginalized the Nibadians and started bringing in his, his, his kinsmen from Grand Jira County. Yeah, Angle, Thomas Watt, Tom, Thomas G. Quimpa, who was a uh, commanding general. He was residing in the barracks. People told to, this man is being praised more than you. You made commanding general because all of you came together. And people gave credence to him more than you. If you don't move him on the barracks and relocate him and change your position, they will overthrow you. He heard it. He just used a decision. Try to relocate the man, change the position. And though he was leader, and, and he should have uh, been and, and uh, uh, given the, 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 the respect, President said, move on the barrier, take the speaker position, he said, no, I can't take it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do one against yes, one, but a brother split between the, 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 the Badians okay. and the Grand Chidans. So he has dominated mm -hmm. most of the people okay, who right. happened to assault the Hold on for him. Late after him. Okay, we're, we're, we're back on. At two, two. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Let's see here. Why should... Because again, the, the, the story of the first black Americans who uh, established Liberia, yeah. the story's not told in America at all, in history books. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not told. It's erased from history books. Basically, we're told... We came as slaves. A guy named Abraham Lincoln freed us. A guy named um, Martin Luther King died so we could drink out of the same water, water faucets as white people. Mm -hmm. And that's it. But this part of history is not shared. And it's, 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 it's mind blowing why it's not. Why, why should, especially black Americans, seeing what we were able to establish, not only in Liberia, but also in Sierra Leone too, because that's not shared either. Why should we celebrate the black Americans who came and established Liberia? Why should we celebrate them? Yes, yes. Because they were able, they, they left from here on a strenuous condition. Hmm? Yes. They were uh, original Africans. They were, uh, they were aborigines of this sort. Yes. And they went over there. They were able to bring certain developed concepts. Yes. That civilized and educated the people that met here. Yes. They did they did the best for them. Had this not happened, maybe it would not have been uh, 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 to, to, the, to the, the, the competitive stand when it comes to education, when it comes to, to talent and other things. But the people were able to go out there and bring in something from, for them to elevate themselves and to elevate them and to, 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 to make them somebody 
The people did it. They didn't marginalize the people here. They were not actually accepted. They were the, the, the people took them to be people different. Say, oh, the they're, they're American, the American man, and this, that. So they look at them a different way. But they were never, never marginalized. They were not even news as slaves here. Those who came to work with the people, the people imparted the, 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 this hardship. It was part of the blood because they knew how their forefathers suffer. Mm -hmm. And they came here, you can't just sit down and somebody just bring you food, complacently, but I'm going bring you food, go eat. You must go through the hardship. Our people never accepted to go through the hardship. Right. And these people went, were able to bring in something for them, to, you know, to develop them mindfully, mm -hmm. educatively. They brought in religion. They went to the first religion that, 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 that came here was uh, the Muslim religion. Mm -hmm. When the Christian came later and civilized everything. So I think they should be very grateful to these original people that brought sanity, sanity, learning to them. Yeah. There's an exception to every rule. We can't say everything was 100%. But this, they, 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 the American librarian cannot be looked upon as, as people who were, were dreadful, people who were wicked and things that. That was the perception that is being carried out about, mm -hmm. about the American librarian. Now, what was, how, how was Liberia? So before the first coup, mm -hmm. explain Liberia. Like, they said a li Liberia was the, a perfect model on how a republic should be ran, a country should be ran. They said Liberia was beautiful. A uh, very wealthy country. They said, in fact, that was ahead of, I want to say, Japan and Korea. Well, like, how was Liberia before the first coup? The, the first coup was uh, 1980. 80, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, things were not, uh, were not uh, that hot. We we had our own currency in brass coin. Mm -hmm. We had the president uh, pictures on it. I have it. I have so. My dad used to come to Liberia yeah, all the time. President Absolutely. Tottenham, President Tolbert, all uh -huh. of them. Samuel Do, all of them had their pictures. Such was the time. The economy was not looking like this, you know. Things change. Uh -huh. You got something called evolution. You have to change with the time. All right. But you cannot sit down complacently and just deal with the old others. All right. But Liberia, the problem came from our leadership. Uh -huh. We had a, had a leader who took the plight of the people first. But they always look at their own plight rather than the plight of the people. This mm -hmm. had been an old age problem for this country. When I got to know myself, I met President Tuckman mm -hmm. in power. He perpetrated in power for 27 years. Right. Yeah. But people continue to say there was a controversy between the Tuckmans and the Coleman because Tuckman killed my grandfather with gone. Huh? But I called my son. He did what? Kill him with gun. Oh, wow. Kill him along with his oldest son, political maneuvering. Oh, wow. Because of the True Party, the assistance of the True Party. Mm -hmm. That True Party, the assistance came in 1869. The True Party was organized, came in 1869 because of the black and white color and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They brought a problem. And when our president was thrown, dragged in the streets of Monrovia, and died of dreadful death, President E.J. Roy. See, but since the downfall of the True Party in 1980, other bringing in multi parties in, things became wise to me. But looking at it, we're in blind days. One man ruling the country, and he only climbed down on his, his political uh, and uh, oppositions, Tatman. But he made things feasible for everybody. He was able to establish counties, originally five counties. 1964, he brought in four new counties. From there, he was able to carry administration through all the length and breadth of this country. Establish many administration, administrative headquarters around this, this country. He was able to do things administratively. Mm -hmm. But uh, this uh, inferiority complex is still dwell in the minds of the aborigines. So some of the people went in line, and they more than us. Most of the people didn't, but people used to go and look for them and bring them into civilization. But they fear. They fear, they just cut themselves. Uh, and, and back home, they stay there until most of them remain native, until their death. You see, but there was nothing so much 
to say that they, that they were being killed. Mm -hmm. They were being killed. All mm -hmm. oh, 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 misuse, abuse, what now? No, no. There's not uh, no hundred percent going out to these people to say, oh, they treated them they good. They, they treated them good. But I look at it as being 50-50. Because they didn't act well their part. The people that came here try to institute good measures for the livelihood of all Liberians. Right. But it was never totally accepted by the majority of people on the ground. That you see today, we can we continue to say it and I will continue to say it. The leadership we have today that's the worst leadership in the history of Liberia. Mm. Because they, they, they are of one mindset. These people came, they are different people. We are in the majority. We are the country people. So any man who goes in power from the, 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 the majority group, that's the man that we want. Today, today we have the problem because they still look at the common people as being the boss man. The American are in the mm -hmm. boss man. Until, until the country is no more country, it will always be like that. How many combat people you see around here? So you speak like American man, mm -mm. they push you one side. If they can't get anything other, they push you one side. It continues today. But that, that marginalization, that inferiority complex, they exist today. Today now, the, the American librarian become the underdogs. Mm -hmm. The indigenous people are over everything. And you see the country is now running well. Originally, Liberia was better than today. Okay. Chief job doing the landscaping, our former president, Ellen Johnson, said it. And then we discovered that she had a group who was doing landscaping at the end of the Dutchman farm. And then it just caused the ship, threw her people, and it saw the ship piece of it. And it started chasing that iron. And then the iron began to go to that copper bottle. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And it started cutting it. Then when the dapper got the low, when the dappers, the dappers, the people can come and dapper double, and dapper fish. So when you get to know that something is in the water when it went, in the river to see, then the fan, there was iron, and this iron was also copper. And when you see the king start cutting it. So they cut it, cut it all. Oh, and they're the one that really on shoe for now. And that's part of the boat, the original boat. Yeah, so the original boat they mutilated. They took what they could get. So whatever's left right now is something that they can't get to. Mm -hmm. They will probably have to excavate yeah, have to, to bring in like some machinery to bring in anything that was exposed. The divers and the the mongers yeah, when came they brought it in. Up, they, no, he said yeah. once they started doing the landscaping, they right. discovered that there was some in the river. Okay. And once everyone around started to also here, they started jumping in the water. Yes, so there was the, a horse ground now for them. Yes. Oh, Anybody okay. come, the police start running after them. Uh -huh. This is why the time. island is locked. Yes. Uh -huh. During the day. But the police, the police begin to start running after them. But certain time came, and they go, here the police, everything be done well. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. Yep. So there is part of the original ship Under here. Under here. Under here. But it would, have to take a force of government and some, some heavy duty machinery to, to excavate that. So listen, for all those historians, <laughs> come, come closer, come closer. For all those historians out there, black historians, Professor Davis, you know I'm talking to, <laughs> Professor Davis, I'm talking to you. Part of the original ship. Yes, it's still here. It's still here. So we need people who are interested in history to come help excavate the ship. And bring it to the surface so we could, I don't know, restore it, you know, pre preserve it, because it's history. Same thing with, um, for those who know about Cujo Lewis in uh, Mobile, Alabama, the last slave who came from Dahomey, which is President Benin Republic, who came to America. They just discovered that ship in Mobile, Alabama, uh, near Africatown. I was just there this summer. So I know they're starting to bring that ship up, preserve it. Uh, and you know whatever they do with stuff like that so we can do the same thing here in Liberia because the original ship is somewhere under here so so yeah so Joe I think you should get it, it, 
So when the settlers came, obviously, like you said, there was tribal beefs going on. So the question is, integrate into what? As if people speak on it as if there was already one Liberia. There was not. Right. So what are you, what are you supposed and, to integrate up to? Until, oh, the, 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 the boundaries of what is Liberia today were broadly drawn by the 1860s, 1870s, and then reshaped after the Berlin Conference when France and, and, and um, uh, England encroached and, and took away. And, and, and there's documentation of that. Um, when J.J. When J. Roberts was, uh, became president, um, uh, the first trip he made was to England. And there the Bishop, Archbishop of Canterbury gave him the funds after he made a, a speech to purchase the Galinas, which was a major slave trading area. And so Liberia took it under its um, uh, national territory uh, to, and then start started attacking, and they gave them a gunboat. Queen Victoria gave him a gunboat to go and stop the slave trading that was going on there. So they attacked there, they drove out the slave traders, etc., etc. A um, few couple of decades later, the British come and they take that whole area back um, for the crown. Forget the fact that he purchased it using funds that he got from the Archbishop of Canterbury. So, no, there was not one common group called Liberians. Right. The tribes here fought bitterly, and I can send you some documentations on the Condo Federation that was at, at play during the 1820s and 1830s under King Saul Bozo. Um, they were wiping out entire tribes, one tribe versus the other. That's what Liberia was here. And so, in some cases, they embraced the smaller tribes, the weaker tribes, and, and, and took them in. Um, in other cases, they, they, they tried to negotiate between, between the tribes, but what was Liberia is a series of coastal settlements, uh -huh. not this great big territory that we're here. And so when people from, from up in Nimba say, oh, you didn't, you didn't educate my people, gee, we didn't really have effective control of that area until the, the, after World War I, mm -hmm. um, or World War Two even. So, Hello. Uh, yeah, okay, alright. Yeah. My last week, my yeah. son Fabio. How you doing, Fabio? New place, and you immediately have to to find find your way. You have to, to, to find what, what am I going to do to be able to eat tomorrow? How am I going to take care of my family? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Nothing is laid out for you, and certainly nothing was laid out for them. And so that's that's part of the narrative that gets brushed under the, when you, if you want to reduce it into a broad stroke of they came and they did this. Uh, That's what it's reduced to, and it's, it's you know it's it's like saying um, doing that to America, right? And and you you, you, you can't do that to America. Um, you can't do that to any place. Just reduce it to one or two sentences that that clumps everybody together. Um, some of, I grew up in, in, in a more privileged household here in Liberia. Like I said, this, this house, this is not, uh, you know, uh, I don't claim to be the poorest of the poor, but I have many, 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 many of my relatives that did not have this. And they come from settler backgrounds too. So they're tarred by the same brush as, mm -hmm. oh, you all came with, you had all the privilege and you had all the power. Right. They didn't. Okay, so the, the, the other broad brushes, um, the settlers came and enslaved and practiced, implemented a system of apartheid. That's the other yes, misinformation. Yes, yes. Um, they came and they enslaved. Um, the settlers came and almost every war that was fought mm -hmm. here between the settlers and the indigenous people, mm -hmm. every war that was fought up until, let's say, 1900, every war that was fought here was either a defensive war on the part of the settlers, okay. that, that is to say they were attacked, mm -hmm. or 
they were fighting to free slaves who were being sold. So the my, I have a good it's friend Larry. Slavery. I have a good friend, Professor Larry Davis. You'll love him. He mm -hmm. knows the history of Black Americans and their contribution to the planet. Mm -hmm. He said that the Sierra Leoneans and Americo Libyans were the original abolitionists in Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, <clears throat> there were many wars that were fought where one tribe was about to wipe out another tribe. And one tribe, what they call suit for peace, came to the American, the American settlers and said, can you please help us or can you please protect us? Some of them were just assimilated into society. And how can you go 200 years and say, this person has... This person is this, it's not even an ethnicity. Right. This person is a settler, of a, a settler ancestry. I have people in my background, of course, you know, my, among my ancestors, who came from Nigeria, mm -hmm. came from Freetown. My grandfather came from Germany. He was half Jamaican and half German. Born in 1898 in Germany, grew up there, immigrated to. They came. Um, I saw where you were on Providence, on Providence Island. Mm -hmm. Right across from there, there's a parking lot with cars, etc., etc. That used to be a major slave depot. Right, you're standing there, and Can as you the crow flies, it's about it's 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 an area called. Uh, I think it's called um, Ma Ellen Market, something like that. Right there, there's, as soon as you cross the bridge, on your right. Who was participating in the slave trade? You said slave depot. All, the, all of the rivers and tributaries that flowed into the Atlantic had slave barracoons here. Okay. By the time the settlers came, the slave trade was active in this area. It wasn't active in, in Liberia. this area, yes. Okay. In the 1600s and 1700s, um, in the 18, early 1800s, um, Cause the, so when it started to, 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 to pick up here. Because the argument is, even though the slave trade was taking place from Mauritania all the way down to Angola, yep. for some reason in this area, present-day Liberia, there was no slavery going on. That's not true. Okay. That's not true. Uh -huh. um, it, it had its heyday a little bit later than the areas around Angola and, and coming up to the, uh, what's that, uh, the Bight of Benin, mm -hmm. all, all that area. They started the slavery, the slaves coming from there much earlier than the area called Liberia, primarily because the area called Liberia was not that populated. Most of the migrations that came into Liberia came in the 16th century, 16th and 17th century. So by the time you got to the 18th century, seven, late 1700s, um, there were several tribes along, along that area coming into the 1800s. Um, it had just started to pick up briskly um, right after slavery was abolished in the UK, which was what, 1808, 1807, 1808. something like 1807. that. I don't think they were benevolent when they did it. Yeah, well, th that's when they abolished slavery. Right. And so that's when the, the UK officially would um, stop anybody engaging in the slave trade. Um, and... Uh, so the UK had Sierra Leone, which was also a colony of returnees, and they had the Ghana, Nigeria area, mm -hmm. or they were present there. They were not present in today's Liberia, but there were several British traders, European traders, who were trading sometimes legitimate goods, but many of them dabbled in slave trade because slaves were a commodity. Correct. And, and Anybody who tries to to remove Liberia from from that equation is being disingenuous. Right. It, it's it's every major river. You you know there's ancient maps that show you King Gray's Town, King Chief Bob's Town, etc. etc. And they all had um, they traded in slaves among other things. Liberia, this area got its name from the trade in in. Uh, peppers, Malagato peppers, and rice. So they did not come into trading in humans, um, like I said, until a little bit later, but they used to re-victualize 
and 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 prov give provisions, sell provisions to the the ships that were trading in slaves. And so slave ships plied these waters up and down from where we're living, uh, where we're sitting in right now. Slave ships were quite common. So come the settlers. Right. And and what we conveniently forget in our history is that there were two groups of white agents that were sent out by the American Colonization Society to buy land. And the first group that did a purchase and somebody posted the deed right. um, in Basel, uh, I think the area the, called Buchanan now. I think it's in the, the uh, museum, is it? Did I see the deed in the museum? No, no. Okay, there was, that, okay. That, that's not the deed I'm talking okay. about. This one, it's, it, it's in some collection in a, in, a, in a library in the U.S. They purchased from the Basel chiefs and kings in that strip the land where they wanted to settle. But one of the conditions of the Basel chiefs was that the settlers would never interfere with the slave trade. Mm. That they would not be touched and they could continue slavery, the trading in slaves, but the settlers could come and, and as long as everybody lived happily together, you let us continue trading our slaves and you can come and you can sit over there. And that was put in writing. And that was sent back to the American Colonization Society who, of course, refused it. Um, then the other group came up here and traded, uh, you know, negotiated um, uh, at gunpoint at one point because they were put at gunpoint and, and they were threatened. So we're not, we're not that told that part of the story, right? I wasn't there. Um, they negotiated it. They paid whatever the price was at the time, which today looks ludicrous, but they paid. Um... And they got a piece of land, which was along Water Street uh, or so. Um, and when the settlers came to settle on there, they told them, no, no, no. You go over there to Providence Island. You've been to Providence Island, so mm -hmm. you've seen it. Um, and that, that deal did not have the slave, the continuation of the slave as a proviso. So the ACS, American Colonization Society, accepted the continued slave trade. Right. To me, that was like one of the main positives coming out of the formation of the colony of Liberia and the sub subsequent republic. The fact that you had um, former slaves who understood what to be a slave was, who were in a position to try and stop uh, like slave factories or slave camps where slaves would be brought from the interior of the country or from other countries and put on the, at the coast where Portuguese and other slavers would have them and then they'd be picked up by slave agents. Okay, so the slave trade was going on in this area presently known as Liberia when the natives, I'm sorry, when the uh, Americos came, is that what you're saying? Yeah, definitely. It was, the slave trade was going on at the time of the founding of, of Liberia and they, they had a they had many uh, clashes, uh -huh. uh, diplomatic as well as uh, physical, with uh, slave traders um, in many cases because they all, the slave traders also refused to recognize the, um, the authority of the republic, uh -huh. and so that was a definite, that was one source of contention. And one of the because one of the main things of the republic was slavery was banned. Right. It was not allowed. And so that was a serious um, case. And that also impugned on the sovereignty of Liberia in many cases because the slave traders were of European origin. Right. And in some cases, like I know in Cape Mount, you know, whatever, they had, I think it was in Basel, they had slave traders of like British origin, even though their governments uh, didn't support them publicly did uh, give them support as uh, British nationals or Portuguese nationals because of their uh, colonial ambitions uh, because they would normally use them as their representatives or their factors in that portion of the hinterland which in certain cases like you were late claim to 